Well, as Rani Sokolov said, I'm the only member of this faculty exposing at this conference. My uh, topic is based uh, on the question of what is probability in statistical mechanics, more precisely in Gibbs formulation of statistical mechanics. So I will be talking about the uh, traditional frequency interpretation of statistical mechanics and uh, is, uh, is that interpretation really good for Gibbs formulation of statistical mechanics. So let's say something about the probability and uh, the frequency interpretation of probability most notably com comes from the law uh, of large numbers and uh, it follows from the law of la large numbers that the sequence of trials, in the, uh, of Bernoulli trials, which means uh, trials that uh, have only two uh, outcomes as a result, uh, either the event has happened or it has not happened. So the, uh, the law of uh, large numbers uh, tells us that the, this frequency in a large number of trials tends to the th theoretical probability of the event. <coughs> For example, uh, Bernoulli, uh, of Bernoulli trial, we can take a fair, cost, uh, fair coin toss, which has a theoretical probability of one half for the uh, heads and tails. So in the large uh, number of trials, these frequencies should converge to the th theoretical probabilities. And in this way, the frequencies are the factual properties of the real world that can be measured in, in the experiment. But as we know from the axiomatic probability theory, uh, probability is something that we uh, assign to the individual events or we calculate uh, the probabilities of the composite events from the rules, the axioms of the probability theory. But in these axioms, there is nothing that tell us how to assign the probabilities. So <coughs> this uh, law, law of large numbers is really only a rule uh, that uh, tells us how to translate the theoretical probability to the uh, estimated frequencies in the uh, experiments. So <coughs> it uh, can be applied only if we can uh, somehow uh, do this infinite series of measurement. But in statistical mechanics, uh, I don't think that anyone would agree that we really measure uh, the frequencies of the individual microscopic events in the, uh, in the infinite number of trials to find the theoretical probabilities. Uh, in the statistical mechanics, we really uh, try to predict the results of the experiments uh, or draw inferences from these experiments uh, under uh, if they, these experiments are done under what appears to be identical conditions. Uh, this means really that they are done on the ensemble of the identical systems. So the uh, traditional expositions define uh, the probabilities uh, having this in mind as a limi limiting frequency in independent repetitions of a random experiment. But the essence of uh, the Gibbs formalism is that no prob uh, probability is just simply a frequency. And we will see now how the principle of, uh, principle of maximum information entropy uh, uh, allows this justification uh, the, uh, of the probabilities of the Gibbs formalism without uh, any kind of use of the ensembles or frequencies. <coughs> this is done uh, in the framework of predictive statistical mechanics, which is really uh, statistical mechanics based on the maximum information entropy principle. Uh, let's say 
uh, something about the, the information entropy. Uh, for us, the most important that it is a measure of uncertainty. Some people uh, really uh, define it as a measure of amount information, but uh, in this probabilistic context, uh, it is uh, uh, more precisely defined as a measure of the uncertainty represented by the probability distribution. And uh, Shannon has proved that the, the only function satisfying these three reasonable conditions is the above function, p log p, summed over the uh, all possibilities. Uh, these uh, three conditions uh, are uh, really some, some, sometimes called the consistency conditions. And they allow uh, to, uh, 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 they uniquely define or determine the form of this function, which is called the information entropy. Uh, the principle of maximum information entropy is uh, based uh, on this concept of information entropy, and it was formulated by James in 1957 as a general criterion for the construction of the probability distribution when the available information is not sufficient to uniquely det determine the probability distribution. So <coughs> uh, this is just the case where, when, when it is not possible to uh, do this uh, frequency experiment with the infinite series of trials. So uh, what is the uh, what is the real explanation of this principle? Uh, why uh, uh, why uh, it uh, why it has found its use in the statistical mechanics by maximizing the the information entropy or the uncertainty subject to the given constraints? Uh, we include in the probability distribution only the available information. Represented by, represented by those constraints. And we uh, exclude all other uh, assumptions which are uncertain and which are not supported by the available information and they are related really to the missing information. So predictions derived from such distributions depend only on the available information and do not depend on the arbitrary assumptions. Uh, the application of the maximum information entropy principle is known as the Maxent algorithm. And uh, for, uh, on this example, we will show how it is done. Let's uh, assume that we have a random variable uh, which can take n values with n probabilities. And that the available information are given by the expectation values of some functions and the uh, also, we know that the probability distribution must also satisfy the normalization condition. So, in most cases, the available information uh, is far less than sufficient for the unique determination of probabilities, which means that this set of, of equations have many solutions and not the, uh, only one unique solution, because the set of constraints is uh, much less that then the set of, uh, the number of constraints is much less than the number of possibilities. Uh, and then in such cases, the only way to determine really the probability distribution is uh, by applying the maxent principle. So it is done by uh, maximizing the information entropy uh, subject to given constraints, most easily by the method of Lagrange multipliers by, uh, by finding the unconstrained, unconstrained maximum of the function i, uh, where the lambdas are the Lagrange multipliers. This gives the max and probability distribution, distribution that maximizes the information entropy subject to the uh, given constraints, given by those expectation values, uh, which is of the familiar form, which um, looks like the Gibbs ensemble. Uh, this z is a partition function. 
uh, or the normalization factor. And uh, as I said, it is not, no surprise that uh, these distributions look like uh, Gibbs ensemble distributions because this algorithm was uh, already given by Gibbs in 1902. Uh, the uh, reason behind the Gibbs algorithm or Gibbs method was to assign uh, that probability distribution which while agreeing with the constraints gives the least value of the average index, index of the probability of phase and we will see why this means that uh, this distribution m then maximizes the information entropy sub subject to those constraints because the uh, index of the probability of phase is this log of probability so the average uh, index of the probability of phase is p log p uh, so the, uh, the, the average index of the probability of phase is really the, the negative of the information entropy. And uh, so it is n no surprise that uh, uh, in, uh, the, uh, the, uh, our uh, max and probability distributions really look like the Gibbs ensemble distributions. And by applying this method, Gibbs uh, uh, came to the canonical ensemble, grand canonical ensemble, and also an ensemble for, for a system rotating at a fixed uh, angular velocity, which are known for, from, for all people who studied statistical mechanics as the basic, uh, along with the microcanonical ensemble, as the basic uh, equilibrium ensembles. Uh, some properties of the Max and formalism are given here. And uh, from these expressions, we really see that they are uh, the same properties as the, uh, that uh, of the Gibbs formalism of um, uh, statistical mechanics. They formally look uh, identical. Uh, but uh, what is the interpretation of this Max and formalism? We, s we see that uh, very important quantities are so-called La Lagrange multipliers uh, uh, about uh, which have uh, in, an important role uh, and uh, but it is uh, hard to uh, hard to uh, give them uh, uh, real physical interpretation unless we uh, place the situation of these, uh, where th these probability distributions are considered into physical context. context. So the, uh, let's assume that the values of these functions represent energy eigenvalues or eigenvalues of some other quantities from the set of the compatible quantities and uh, the physical interpretation of the Lagrange multipliers follows from the a uh, relation describing the changes of the expectation values of these functions. For example, we, ca we consider the uh, difference of the change of the expectation value of the function, uh, which, gives the, uh, um, which gives the expectation value, and the expectation value of the change of this function. And then in the, uh, as defined by James and Grandy, the expectation value of change of the function is the generalized work, while the quantity delta Q is the generalized heat for the quantity or function Fk uh, uh, for which the expectation value is given as a data. Uh, uh, there, uh, it is also very, uh, one very easily obtains that the change in the maximum, in corresponding change in the maximum information entropy is uh, related to these quantities called general heats in this linear expression uh, where the, they are summed, uh, multiplied by the Lagrange multipliers. For example, if this quantity uh, are the energy eigenvalues, then their expect, uh, expected um, uh, value is the internal energy and uh, if we now consider quasi-static change of uh, in energy of the closed microscopic system, uh, then uh, we have only 
one uh, quantity which changes energy and uh, changing the maximum information entropy is simply uh, lamb uh, Lagrange multiply multiplier of the energy uh, multiplied by the uh, heat uh, from the above expression uh, we then obtain that the change in the expectation value is the change in the internal energy uh, change expectation value of the change of energy is uh, work done on the system which equals heat. Uh, if we then compare uh, this expression with the first law of ther thermodynamics where the thermodyni thermodynamic entropy, not information entropy, but thermo thermodynamic entropy explicitly ap appears and uh, uh, this allow allows us to identify the Lagrange mul multiplier lambda as the re reciprocal temperature. Uh, more precisely as the um, reciprocal of the Boltzmann constant uh, multiplied by the temperature. So the, uh, ch uh, the change in the maximum information entropy uh, is uh, related to the change uh, or the exact differential of the thermodynamic entropy and the inverse temperature is the integrating factor for heat. Uh, confirmation of this interpretation follows easily by introducing uh, now identify, uh, now found Lagrange multiplier, lambda in the max and uh, distribution, and we see that we obtain the Gibbs canonical distribution that describes the closed system of known temperature in equilibrium with the environment, and uh, also from the max and formalism, we then obtain as a derivative of the uh, logarithm of the partition function o over the uh, Lagrange multiply, multiplier, we obtain the uh, expectation value of energy or the internal energy. And uh, it is uh, anal uh, we also know that uh, it is not hard to obtain uh, by considering the open system uh, in analogous manner, we uh, obtain uh, the, the Gibbs grand canonical distribution uh, as a max and probability distribution. So, uh, we have now given the, the physical interpretation of the max and for formalism, but what is the simplest interpretation um, of Gibbs formalism uh, and also the max and formalism in relation to frequencies or the frequency interpretation of probabilities? Uh, let's consider a proposition which is a function of the sample numbers of the uh, a number of trials uh, where we have m, m possibilities for each trial. So the uh, sample numbers are given by n uh, with indices 1 to m. So the number of outcomes for which this proposition A, a is true is, is given by this total multiplicity, uh, total multiplicity uh, number given by the sum over the uh, individual multiplicities of uh, pro uh, distributions of outcomes with the same uh, sample numbers. Uh, the greatest term uh, in this sum, uh, the most uh, important term in this total multiplicity is the maximum multiplicity uh, corresponding to the distribution uh, with the uh, sample numbers that has the, uh, uh, the maximum multiplicity. Uh, it is easily seen that uh, then it is true that the maximum multiplicity is less or equal than the total multiplicity and that uh, the total multiplicity is less or equal than the maximum mu multiplicity uh, multiplied by the total number of terms in the sum or the terms in the sum with, uh, that gives the total multiplicity. By taking a logarith logarithm of this inequality, uh, it is easily seen uh, how we obtain the next relation and uh, from the combi combinatorial argu arguments, we, we easily um, uh, calculate the uh, number of terms in the, uh, in the total multiplicity sum. Uh, it is given by this binomial coefficient uh, which has uh, the following asymptotic form. Uh, 
as the number of trials go, go to infinity. And this is important because if we take the uh, logarithm of this asymptotic form, divide it by the number of trials, we see that it goes to zero. So the logarithm of the total mul multiplicity divided by the number of trials goes really to the logarithm of the maximum multiplicity divided by the number of trials. So um, the maximum term in the total multiplicity dominates the total multiplicity. Uh, this, uh, we will uh, s soon explain why this happens, but uh, we, we, we first we say that there is an infinite number of ways in which this limit really can be realized. But the limit we want is uh, the one is wi in which the sample frequencies, the sample numbers divided by the total number of trials, uh, go to constant values, which are the frequencies of, the, uh, of these uh, outcomes. So the, uh, we really want the limit of the, uh, this uh, expression below uh, as the number of trials goes to infinity. Uh, and using the Stirling approximation, uh, we finally found that the logarithm of the, uh, this multiplicity divided by the number of trials goes to the information entropy of the frequency distribution. So in such a limit, as I have already shown, uh, we have that the logarithm of the total multiplicity divided by the number of trials go goes to the logarithm of the maximum multiplicity divided by the number of trials which is equal to the information entropy. But because this maximum, this multiplicity, Vmax is maximum multiplicity, uh, it dominates the total multiplicity and also maximizes the information entropy subject to the constraints that define the region of the sample space for which the proposition from which we started the available data is true. So the, uh, this frequency distribution is not any uh, frequency distribution, it is just the uh, frequency distribution which has the, the maximum information entropy subject to the uh, constraints uh, over the region uh, for which the sample uh, of the sample space uh, given by, by the uh, given by the uh, where the proposition A is true. Therefore, <coughs> The frequency is to be used in the limit of large, large numbers uh, of large number of trials are really the ones that maximize the information entropy over the uh, region of the sample space where the proposition A is true and according to the law of large numbers, these frequencies in the limit of large number of trials correspond then to the max, max and probabilities. So what, uh, let's be, go back to the starting question that the frequencies uh, are the factual properties of the real world, but in this example, we found them uh, only from the application of the principle of maximum information entropy, and therefore, uh, because uh, we said that uh, this principle uh, uh, constructs the probability distribution that depends only on the available information, uh, these, uh, Frequencies depend only on our state of knowledge. They are not the factual properties of the real world. Uh, so we have seen that uh, uh, these are some other, uh, uh, what I have told, uh, explained here is really the special, special case of the asymptotic equipartition theorem of information theory but we don't have now time to go uh, into, into that, this example. And uh, uh, it is important that this relation makes a, a connection between the Boltzmann entropy and the Gibbs definition of entropy in the limit of the large number of particles. So maximization of the information effort entropy therefore amounts to finding the probability distribution uh, that uh, corresponds to the uh, region of the phase space uh, that has uh, uh, the largest number of the uh, microscopic re realizations uh, compatible with the mi uh, mi uh, microscopic realizations compatible with the macroscopic data. 
so uh, it really predicts the behavior that, that can happen in the greatest number of ways compatible with the constraints. So uh, uh, this procedure of information entropy maximization subject to the constraints is really a method uh, which is to, uh, sufficient alone to uh, construct the equilibrium or non-equilibrium and particle distribution or this density matrix in the quantum phase which depends only on the available data. So conclusion, uh, in the conclusion we can say uh, that uh, we have just seen that the probabilities in statistical mechanics especially in the Gibbs formulation cannot be simply interpreted in the interpreted in the frequentist context. Probabilities, at least in the Gibbs formalism of statistical mechanics, uh, are not simply frequencies of the uh, ensemble of the uh, large number of systems. They are description of our information about the individual system. And this is even more true in case of non-equilibrium systems or and irre irreversible processes where uh, justification, physical justification, Pro, for non-equilibrium ensembles as a physical fact uh, vi via equations of motion and well-known ergodic theorems is almost impossible uh, because uh, the ergodic hypothesis uh, depends on the infinite uh, amount of time uh, that must be on our disposition to uh, follow the uh, evolution of the system and uh, in the non-equilibrium situation, system changes in time, so uh, we don't have really uh, such possibility. And um, we have also seen that max and formalism is really a logical extension of the Gibbs method to non-equilibrium situations. And it leads to the relevant uh, statistical distributions, uh, which depend only on the available information uh, and uh, uh, it uh, really does not depend on any kind of, of frequency interpretation of probabilities. Thank you. Um, I want to ask uh, whether you think uh, the Gibbs, uh, so this, uh, let's call it Jane's interpretation of information entropy has some implications uh, to, for the status of statistical mechanics. Um, what I mean is um, you talked about information entropy and I understand uh, Jane's, Jane's uh, view as um, uh, inferential ways uh, how to derive prior uh, probabilities or frequency distributions but uh, what do you think this tells us anything uh, um, foundational about statistical mechanics uh, if, if I'm clear enough so what um, this is a theory about information right but st statistical mechanics uh, has uh, also deals with I its own uh, foundational problems as a science so if you think this has uh, any implications, mayb maybe it's, it's a too philosophical question for you. Just um, I want to know if you understand uh, any of my question. Yeah. I think uh, that uh, this is the simplest interpretation of statistical mechanics. Uh, and uh, it really, uh, people al always uh, find a counter argument, how, how can the system depend or its states uh, or uh, on the status of our knowledge about it. But uh, uh, the m there is a uh, approach uh, followed by Zubarev and his co-workers that uh, really uh, um, makes a th thermodynamic connection uh, with this uh, max and formalism by saying that uh, we first need to find the relevant variables, the relevant quantities for the description of the system on each uh, time scale. Uh, 
for example, the uh, for the kinetic, hydrodynamic, and the ter thermodynamic stage, uh, there are different relevant variables. So um, uh, it is uh, important for the predictions to um, uh, have the data about the relevant variables. All the irrelevant variables are uh, unimportant for making uh, the predictions which, uh, which are uh, interesting on each of, of these time scales. So the, um, uh, really the, the question is of the available information and the inferences uh, we can make from them uh, without uh, making uh, any assumption which is not supported by the data. So it is really uh, an, an if theory of inference. And this connection to the thermodynamics is really uh, what is interesting because um, most people consider um, uh, the thermodynamics as the theory which really uh, is related to the, um, uh, the describes uh, the state of the system uh, objectively uh, as, um, uh, as, as a theory which does not depend on, uh, on the observer and its state of knowledge. So I, uh, my personal opinion that the statistical mechanics and the thermodynamics is just as the uh, as if it if it is considered derived from the statistical mechanics is just a theory of inference. Other questions? There is no other questions. Thank you very much, uh, Domago. We came to the last lecture of this meeting. It's Peter Lukan from Ljubljana, who is also going to want to say something. <laughs> okay. And uh, yes, who is also going to speak about, uh, about probability. He's doing with uh, Marko Ušiš a PhD th thesis on this subject.